Hi, I'm Vanessa from SpeakEnglishWithVanessa.com. Let's talk about bathroom vocabulary. A great way to remember vocabulary, I know that's something that's difficult for English learners, is to know the words that are around you, to be able to talk about your daily routine and to talk about the items in your house because that's what you interact with the most. So today I'd like to help you build your vocabulary specifically for words that are in the bathroom. I'm going to be taking you around the this bathroom in my house and explaining all of the vocabulary words that exist here. They might not be the same that exist in your country, so make sure that you let me know in the comments if there are any things that exist in your bathroom that don't exist in mine. Before we get started, I want to explain some words that I use to talk about this room. Look at these three words, bathroom, restroom, washroom. I'm from the US and we use only two of these. <laughs> Can you guess which two we use? You just heard me say one of them. We use bathroom and restroom, but there is a difference between these. A bathroom is generally in someone's house, in some kind of comfortable location, and a restroom is usually used for a public situation, maybe a restaurant or in your office if you need to go to the bathroom. You might use this because it feels a little bit more formal. It's a little more indirect. <laughs> it's a restroom. You don't know what's happening <laughs> in the restroom. I'm just resting. <laughs> so we use restroom generally to be a little more polite or to talk about bathrooms in a more formal setting. As for the word washroom in the US, I don't think I've ever heard anyone use this. I could be wrong. It's generally more associated with Canadians. So in Canada, they often say washroom, but anytime that I say this is what they say in Canada, this is what they say in the UK, please um, just understand that I am not an expert <laughs> in other types of English. I only know what I've experienced here in the US. What about these words? Toilet. Lou, John, and water closet. Well, we do use the word toilet, but we don't use it to talk about this room. We never say, I'm going to the toilet. It seems gross or just too direct. <laughs> uh, and Lou, we never say Lou in the US. Also, John, we don't really say the word John either, but this expression, water closet, if you saw this sign, what would you think that means? Let's say you're at a restaurant and you're looking for the bathroom and you see this sign on a door. Would you know that that's the bathroom? You might be able to guess, but water closet or WC is sometimes on a bathroom door and it just means that's the bathroom. Now, sometimes we use uh, kind of silly words to talk about the bathroom. For example, you might hear lavatory powder room, girl's room. <laughs> and these are always usually said with that same tone of voice that I just used. Lavatory. This is a very mm, high class way to say bathroom. So if you are wanting to be a little bit silly, you might say, excuse me, where's your lavatory? If you're in your friend's house, you might say that'd be kind of funny. Or you might say, I need to go to the powder room to freshen up. And I think this is something that we don't ever say seriously. It's usually just kind of as a, as a little joke. Oh, I need to go um, make sure that there's no food in my teeth. I'm going to go to the powder room. <laughs> or you might hear the girl's room. And this is not just for little girls. This is talking about the bathroom. If you go to your friend's house and you need to go to the bathroom, you might ask, where's the girl's room? But only if you're a girl. <laughs> uh, we don't really say, where's the boy's room? I think that maybe this is just because sometimes women are more indirect about these types of things. I'm not sure, but occasionally you will hear these silly expressions used with the bathroom. Now we have two more. What about these two words? Porta potty and porta john. Do you have a porta potty in your house? I would be very shocked. <laughs> These are a porta potty or a porta john. Usually that's what you would see at a park, or maybe if you go to an outdoor concert 
or somewhere that doesn't have an actual bathroom structure or some kind of restroom outside. So you might see these types of facilities. All right, now that we have cleared all that up, <laughs> when you come to the US, you can use bathroom or restroom. <laughs> and let's get on to talking about the items in my bathroom. Let's start off by talking about this. Here we have the sink. Sometimes it's called a sink basin, but generally that's kind of a more formal word. If you're purchasing a sink, you might see it called a sink basin. Also, we have the faucet and the hot water handle or the cold water handle. I only have one, but you might see some bathrooms that have two. That's also pretty common. At the bottom, this thing <laughs> inside here, down there is the drain. If you need to fill the sink, you might say, plug the drain. I need to push that down, push the drain down so that I can plug the drain and fill up the sink with water. And usually under the sink, you're gonna find some plumbing. Plumbing are the pipes that bring the water to your faucet and then away from your drain. Notice that the B here is silent. Plumbing, plumbing. We're gonna be talking about these items a little bit later in this lesson. So let's move on to the next place in the bathroom. All right, here we are by the toilet, one of the features of the bathroom. In the US, we always call this the toilet. We don't call the room the toilet, as I mentioned. So on the toilet, we have two lids. This is in the US. We have the lid and we have the seat, which can also go up. And this is always a point of contention in marriages, right? Put the seat down. And this is what a lot of uh, wives say. <laughs> Put the seat down. Don't leave the seat up. Uh, I'm curious if uh, you have ever had this discussion in your house. <laughs> so we have the lid. And we have here, this is, well, this is the toilet bowl. You can imagine a bowl. And back here is the flusher <laughs> uh, or the toilet handle because we can push this to flush the toilet. Don't forget to flush the toilet when you're finished, to flush the toilet. Uh, our bathroom, we have installed an extra feature on our toilet. It is this thing, it is a bidet. This is becoming a little more common in the US, but it is certainly not a well-known feature of a toilet in the US, but because my husband and I have lived abroad, we know about bidets, so we have a bidet installed in our toilet. Um, also around the toilet, you will see there is a plunger here for helping the toilet to flow freely. <laughs> and we have a toilet brush for cleaning the toilet, some extra toilet paper. But here, if you can see on this side, we have our toilet paper holder and our toilet paper. I have a question for you. <laughs> do you have your toilet paper coming over the top or do you have it coming from behind? For me, I prefer it like this, coming from the top, but I know everyone has different opinions about this. <laughs> uh, sometimes on the back of the toilet, you will see a, a box of tissues. In the US, we almost always call these Kleenex. This is the brand, but it's also just what we generally call this type of item. Or uh, for us, we have a baby, so we have some baby wipes also on the back of the toilet. Uh, we have one more thing. <laughs> this. Um, do you know what this is? Can you guess? <laughs> it is called a squatty potty. <laughs> uh, I actually got this online. I got this from somebody in my city online. Somebody online said, I'm selling a squatty potty thing that you put under your toilet. Uh, does anyone want to buy it? And I said, me, I want to buy it. <laughs> so I met her at a gas station. It kind of felt like a drug deal because she hopped out of her car she said, are you here for the squatty potty? And I said, yes, I am. And I gave her my 10 bucks and she gave me the squatty potty and we left. Ooh. But this is a kind of a 
device that helps your body, supposedly, to be in a better position so that your bowels <laughs> can move freely. So I'm not sure if it actually works or not, but it's something that I thought was pretty cool and it was worth a try. Next, let's talk about the shower or the tub. Now, in my bathroom here, we have two bathrooms in my house. In this bathroom, we do not have a tub. I didn't feel like cleaning our other bathroom. <laughs> Otherwise, I would show you a tub, but this is what it looks like. <laughs> uh, most bathrooms have a tub, and then there's also a shower. This bathroom does not have a shower curtain. A shower curtain is a kind of cloth that comes over. Instead, we have these glass shower doors. You can barely see them in the video, <laughs> but there are glass doors that block the water from spraying everywhere in our bathroom. In our shower, we have a shower head, and sometimes the shower head is detachable, or sometimes it's just fixed on the wall. There's also a shower handle where you can turn on the hot and cold water. I'm not going to turn that on right now so I don't get wet. <laughs> uh, in our shower, we have a squeegee. Because we have these glass doors, when they get wet, it's good to take care of them and not let the water accumulate <laughs> on the sides. So we will squeegee them after taking a shower. And this is a verb and a noun. This is a squeegee, and I need to squeegee the doors. Sometimes I squeegee the walls too. <laughs> this is my three-year-old son's favorite activity, <laughs> to squeegee everything. It is pretty fun. <laughs> but we do this to take care of our shower. On this end of our shower, we have our shower goods. <laughs> there is shampoo, conditioner, there's also liquid soap and bar soap. Uh, you might have both in your shower or you might have some kind of shower scrub. This is a liquid that has some kind of little um, abrasive pieces in it to scrub your skin. A lot of people will use maybe a loofah or a sponge or a washcloth to wash their body. We have this little, it's, it's a thing that we got in Korea. Well, it's not the same one from Korea, but it's this little rag. <laughs> you can put your hand in it and it's a little bit scratchy and you can kind of just uh, wash yourself with this. I like it. On the wall of our shower, we have tiles. These are the shower tiles. A lot of people like this look, but they don't like taking care of it <laughs> because in between here is called grout and you have to occasionally clean the grout in your shower. Maybe you need to get an old toothbrush and scrape it. You need to do something. We have this spray that somebody gave us. It cleans without having to rinse. Spray it on your shower once a day. I don't do that. <laughs> I spray it maybe once a week if I remember, but you can spray it on the tiles and maybe it makes it so you don't have to scrub them. I don't know. We'll see what happens, but there's different products like that too. You might notice here in the bottom of our shower is a little turtle. It's a secret that all Americans keep a little toy turtle in the bottom of their shower. Don't tell our secret. Just kidding, it's my son's toy. One more thing is you might hear the term shower stall. A shower stall is generally in a more public place, like in a gym or in a dormitory where there's multiple people showering at the same time. A shower stall are gonna be those individual shower spots. There might be a shower curtain, there might be nothing, it might just be open, but this is kind of a more public thing. So. We don't really use the term shower stall to talk about the bath shower area in your house. That's more in a public place. In our bathroom, we have several types of towels. One type of towel is simply a bath towel and we hang that bath towel on a hook or you might have a towel rack or a towel bar where you hang your towel. We only have these little hooks to hang our towels on. You also might use a washcloth. I mentioned this previously that you might use this in the shower. For me, I use this to wash off my face in the morning or in the evening, and I hang it on 
this little rack to dry. Another type of towel you might have is simply a hand towel. All of these are pretty self-explanatory, right? Bath towel, washcloth, I guess you could wash anything with that, and hand towel. Can you guess what you wash with a hand towel? <laughs> you use it to dry your hands, and it's hanging on this ring to let it air out in between washings. Next, let's talk about some of the items which might be in your bathroom. On our counter, we have a comb. This is not a brush. I have some hair ties, my glasses, some deodorant, and a contact lens case. You might just say also a contact case. I have my jewelry. There is an outlet for plugging things in. On the other side, we have a soap dispenser here. Then we have our tooth toothbrush holder. Inside that toothbrush holder is a toothbrush and toothpaste. Beside it is an electric toothbrush. There is some floss, some more deodorant, and underneath here is a glasses lens cleaner and another glasses lens cloth. A lot of bathrooms in the US will have a little closet or some shelves for linens. If this is a separate area or if it is in your closet, we still call this a linen closet. Linens are sheets, towels, blankets. Mine is a little bit messy, a little bit disorganized, but it's okay. <laughs> so here, these are where I keep my linens. On the other side of that linen closet is another shelf where we keep some band-aids, extra shampoo, these types of things. And we could call this a medicine cabinet, but it's not necessarily a cabinet. You're gonna see that in just a moment. Instead, we'll still say that this is in the closet and these are some extra bathroom items. Some other items that you might have in your bathroom is some contact solution. This goes with my contact lenses that I wear occasionally, uh, some contact lens solution. You might also have some Q-tips. I don't really use these, but for some reason we have them. <laughs> Instead of Q-tips, you might have cotton balls that look like this or cotton rounds. Sometimes people use these to take off uh, makeup or for other things, I guess, but you might have other kind of cotton supplies in your bathroom. In the bathroom, you have some tweezers and fingernail clippers. These are giant fingernail clippers. <laughs> and sometimes on the fingernail clippers, or you might have a separate piece as well, there is a nail file for filing your nails. Occasionally, this is called an emery board. I haven't really heard this an awful lot in my life, but if someone said, oh, I need to buy an emery board, I would know what they were talking about, but it's not as common as a nail file, which is pretty clear, right? It's a nail file for filing your nails. For shaving, you need a razor. Sometimes it comes with some extra razor blades. I think Dan has already finished using all of those. This is his razor. You also have some shaving cream and maybe you use some aftershave. I don't know if this is true in your house, <laughs> but my side of the bathroom counter has way more things than Dan's side of the counter. I think in his drawer, oh, there's nothing but an empty box. <laughs> but on my side, there are uh, quite a few things. For example, I have some makeup, some different bottles of potions like makeup remover. Uh, I have a, this is just um, some witch hazel, but it can be used as like a toner for your skin. And I have some other hair supplies like clips and some things for my hair like bobby pins. I'm not sure why we say bobby, <laughs> but these are called bobby pins and you can put them in your hair to keep your hair back. Ah. In the bathroom, there's also a curling iron for curling your hair. You might also have a straightener or you might have a hair dryer. Do you know what? <laughs> this hair dryer I got two weeks ago because the hair dryer I had before that, I have had since high school. <laughs> this hair dryer was like, 15 years old is amazing. <laughs> no, I guess older than that. Maybe like 16, 17 years old. 
<laughs> and finally it died, but I can't believe it lasted that long. It was just a cheap hair dryer from the grocery store, but it lasted a long, long, long time. And finally it just stopped working. So I have a new hair dryer. Hopefully this one will also last for 15 years. <laughs> If you choose not to use a hair dryer, you can do what's called air drying. So you might say, I often say this, I need to air dry my hair. And this is the opposite of using a hair dryer. I need to use the hair dryer or I need to air dry my hair. Generally they say that air drying your hair is better for your hair. So usually I air dry my hair for a while. And then if I'm going to go to bed and it's still a little wet, I'll use the hair dryer a little bit just to kind of make it so that I'm not sleeping in a wet mop. <laughs> the final thing I'd like to talk about in the bathroom is laundry and the trash can with the trash bag. <laughs> uh, your laundry might be in a laundry basket. You might call this a laundry hamper. I personally don't use the word hamper. It feels a little bit old fashioned, but it might just be a regional difference in the US where some places say hamper, some places say basket. Uh, this is a laundry basket. This is kind of soft, but you might have a hard plastic laundry basket too. In the laundry is dirty laundry. <laughs> and this just means dirty clothes. There's dirty laundry, I need to put it in the washing machine. And then after that, I'll fold it and I'll put it away in the closet. All right, we talked about a lot of bathroom vocabulary in this video. I hope it was useful to you. I want to know, tell me in the comments below, what are some items that I missed or what exists in your bathroom that doesn't exist in my bathroom? Let me know in the comments and make sure that you read other comments as well so that you can learn about other expressions and other places around the world. Thank you so much for learning English with me and I'll see you again next Friday for a new video here on my YouTube channel. Bye. The next step is to download my free ebook, Five Steps to Becoming a Confident English Speaker. You'll learn what you need to do to speak confidently and fluently. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more free lessons. Thanks so much. Bye.